Hey guys, just uh, wait for people to get in and we'll get going. <clears throat> There's Damien. Any bit rowdy business from these guys today, Damien, just throw them out. <laughs> Give it a couple of minutes, guys, and we'll get going. Hi, Rob. How you doing? Hi, Vic. Greg, I can see your chat, Stan. I won't be able to hear you because there's no mic. This is a um, webinar. Long week, very. I mean, we're doing roller coaster this week, but it's been a roller coaster for me for emotions and and trading. Um, you know, last week was a, an amazing week, had a really great winning week. This week was good days, bad days, even days, bad days. It's just one of those weeks for me. So um, I'm glad it's over. And I can go and reset. Just going away this weekend to, uh, to chill out, relax. No computers. That would be a good thing. So we do roller coaster today. Um, uh, how many people have already have the roller coaster, or is it easy to say how many people don't? So let's go for don't. If you don't have it, type don't in the chat on all panelists and attendees. So in the chat box, click all panelists and attendees, uh, and say don't or do, don't or do. But a lot of do's. But a lot of do's. Okay. I'm starting with an example for a stock, actually. Funnily enough, there, Vic. So, um, okay. So, most of you have it. So, there'll be some questions today, and that's what I'm here for. So first of all, I just want to go back through the basics again right now. So <clears throat> I know this has Elliott Wave on it and also the, the roller coaster, but I just wanted to show you this. When this happens and you get a roller coaster uh, entry, if you like, uh, and you've got a potential fifth wave and all the ducks aligned, the only thing that didn't like was the false breakout stochastic here. Uh, if this was a fall, if this was a potential fifth wave move. Uh, had the false breakout, but I didn't get that roller coaster. I wouldn't have traded it. Okay, but I traded the roller coaster. I was a little bit more conservative on the entry, if you like. But now the trailing stop is printing above my entry, and I'm locking in profit. It's not exciting. It's not sexy when you're swing trading stocks because every day is a new day. You got an open, a close, a high, and a low. You wait for that to happen, print a trailing stop, and then you adjust the trailing stop. It is one of the stressless type um, trading strategies uh, that you could have. If you've got specific entry strategies like the roller coaster with a trailing stop position, you don't really need to think. The only thing you need to do is look what's happening in the trend, okay? I can see this is an uptrend. This recent pullback, when I look at this, found support at a previous resistance zone, okay? So this pullback was a good pullback, yeah? It made sense. 
in that it came to test this previous resistance zone, found support and started to move back up again. I just so happened to have the Elliott wave on there as well. Uh, so I know roughly where this should find a fifth wave move because remember the fifth wave target zones are fib zones. So that's happened. We're good to go. I've got a decent risk to reward with my entry strategy. Remember, the stop is automatically printed be uh, below the, the recent um, low pivot. The stop for this one was printed below this pivot. I just went a little bit more conservative there. This is a bit of a hybrid, but usually, and I say this usually, once the price starts to go through this 50% times risk, in 90% of the cases, we are risk-free with our trailing stop. Which again, I know the risk reward to the center of that target zone is one to 1.5, still great risk to reward, but the risk reward to the previous wave three high is only one to one. But because I got that um, roller coaster strategy, and I know if we get a little bit of a move on here, once we get in and around this 50%, I'm going to be risk free anyway. A free, you know, it's a risk free trade, and we just let it go, okay? And we can we can monitor that and see how it goes. So, you know, stocks are really really uh, simple. Getting, getting those trades. So um, what I want to do is just bring the website over. Just want to go over the smart list for stocks on the roller coaster, which is here. So this scans stocks and ETFs, okay? Scans every day for stocks over $10 in price. Just bear with me a second. So I just had to switch the fan on. Uh, I had to switch it off when I went out earlier. So over $10 in price, over 500,000 shares traded a day on average. So it gives you some sort of reasonably good momentum. Uh, and so once the, um, the entry is um, gone, the signal doesn't leave this smart list. What it does, it's every time it adjusts that trailing stop, once it gets the risk free, uh, it puts the trailing stop on there as well. So not only does it give you signals, it actually tells you where the trailing stops are as well. Okay, and this is on the daily time frame. Okay, so uh, around about 7 a.m. EST, this is updated because some of the overnight data can be slow getting to, um, to the data provider from, from the stock market. So we do that at 7 a.m. And so obviously this morning, we've got some potential shorts and longs. I mean, it's a crappy day today. ES is in such a narrow range, it really is horrible. Uh, but there's some potential trades there. You see quite a few. We have the, the new signal up there and we've got some there. So we're going to look at a few and look at what we do to actually, um, you know, to, to trial those out. So they have a little red flash against them when they're a new signal. So I'm just going to move that off and I'm going to look at some of them and we're going to do, do a little bit of work so we can understand those signals and what I'm looking for. Okay, so we have Royal Caribbean Cruisers. Okay, had a massive drop on a roller coaster, okay, all the way down uh, for COVID-19. We've had a wave four pull pullback, but it's been a lengthy wave four pullback. It's find a higher support zone. So what we're looking for, even on a daily time frame, is that during this move up, we've already had one roller coaster. It's been a winner. We've had a roller coaster down. It's been a winner. So so far on the daily time frame, the win rate is extremely good for this particular stock. What can I tell about the behaviour? We've had the wave three, three low here. Okay. We had a pullback here. Let's just draw these little zones in. Then we had another pullback here. And then recently we've had another pullback. Okay. We've got higher support zones every time. So the bias for me is bullish as far as the movement of this stock from these lows after the pandemic drop. Okay. This is where we are right now. It's a shallow 
uh, channel. I think that's probably a better solution there. Okay. Uh, we've got a big rejection here. So I'm going to draw that in. I'm going to change these colors a little bit on these zones. I'm just going to put this in here and take in the top of that harami as well. So let me just change that color to um, pink. Okay, I'm not afraid of anything pink. So one thing when I'm looking at this entry that we had from last night is that uh, we've gone through some major resistance zones. We've got another one up here on this wave four. So I'm going to put that one in as well. Starting to build a picture of this particular stock right now. When I'm putting this zone in here, what I'm doing is going to that wave four high. And I'm just going to the previous wick high as well, just to give me a little zone. And I'm going to put that in pink as well. Okay. So we have a signal on RCL. We've broken through this resistance zone. We've come back down to test it. We've got a, a, a good test of the channel, short term channel that we've put in. Looks pretty good to me. Okay. The next thing is what's the risk to reward to this wave four pivot? Okay. So we use our fib retracement. We're going to go below these lows uh, on the pivot there. That's our stop. Click once. Our entry is 59.69. I have to adjust that, I think. Okay, so let's just go 69 there. I'm a bit anal about um, being pretty, um, there we go. So this has come up on our scanner, okay, and our stock scanner for potential um move um, potential roller coaster move on the daily time frame we know so far it's had a great long short with a winner it's had a good reasonably good long uh, on the roller coaster here we've pulled back we've got a higher support zone and it's in and around a previous resistance zone so that's good support we've got an entry our risk to reward to this previous wave four pivot is about a one to 1.2 okay now for a roller coaster, that's that's okay for me because I know if this moves up through here and gets to around about the 50% line, the trailing stock will start to print at break even. So way before it tests this resistance, I'm going to be risk free. The potential upside to this, if it breaks this resistance, is $100 to begin with. Okay, and we're going to get in at 58.69. So the potential uplift for this, if uh, the you know the COVID-19 starts to slow down a little bit, cruise cruise liners start to take bookings and things start to go again, even though everybody's wearing masks. Blah 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 blah. Okay, the potential upside for this is huge. It was in and around 132 dollars. Okay, so we've got pretty minimal risk here so if we risk a thousand dollars here potentially you know even up to here this is, could be a four thousand dollar trade now if it's not and it finds resistance here it will be risk-free you might make a thousand bucks but you've got to be in it to win it and this is a really good setup so this came from the stock scanner if i can bring that back over Okay, so at 7 a.m. EST this morning, all these new signals came out. RCL was one of them. Okay, gives you, gives you the entry, gives you the stop. Now, if it does enter, uh, the stop remains the same until our points of control, that um, lagging point of control, gets into the situation where it's printed a trading stock up, stop above the entry. Okay, uh, so any questions on how... I went from a signal because again, there's 8,000 stocks out there. It's very difficult to find a signal, but with this uh, particular um, roller coaster stocks uh, scanner, uh, we give you the signals that on that are on stocks that are going to behave reasonably well. You then have to do that work to see what the risk to reward is. Um, you know where the support resistance zones are. Are we in a channel? What's the bias right now? All those things uh, that I teach every single bloody week. 
okay and all in that uh, in those training courses uh, that you some of you have attended uh, you keep that in mind you've got a good risk reward you're going to go for it because recent activity shows you it's got a good win rate okay right Stan <clears throat> with this wave four at the moment it is very very long on a wave four usually seven to ten candles and it goes back down again this is weeks in the making okay this is very very long okay now it could test this previous high and then come short on a fifth wave move but right now the trend that this is in shorter term is bullish i've got a bullish signal it could well come and test this red zone again. So I may as well trade it. I don't want to ignore it. Let's have a see what it looks like on another time frame. Okay. Let's have a look on the 60. And we're on the 60, we are not really um, trending. We've had a trend down. We've come and tested this support zone. And now we're probably going to come back up again. No, we're not always looking for a break of a channel in this. What would you, okay, if the channel breaks, great trade. But right now, the channel is pretty bloody strong. We've had one, two, three, four tests on the bottom. The center line, big resistance there. Again, the center line on this right now is above the 50%. If we get a roller coaster that's got a great win rate here, we're going to hit this 50% line before we hit the center line, which has acted as a non-linear resistance zone. Usually, by, we get, by the time we get to that 50% line, we're risk-free. We're in it to win it. What if it pushes through there? What if it pushes that uh, wave four pivot out and, and we, we reject that overall bearish trend? We don't know that's going to happen purely because we can't look right. We haven't got a crystal ball. All we can do is do the work, get the signals, make sure we've got enough risk to reward, understand where we are in this current shorter term trend and, and then go for it. Uh, yeah, you need to be out. Um, so let's have a look at this pivot move here. That is from the 18th of March to the 8th of June, so nearly, yeah, I, I would go at least two months out, if not three months out, because we know it can take its time and then it could be a little, uh, you know, runs up and down. So if you were going to call, uh, buy a call uh, spread, you'd need to be out at least 60 days, I would, I would say, Vic. It could get there faster, but again, you're still going to be in the range of that uh, call spread. Just go back and look what's happened right now in this current trend. How long did it take to, to get to these pivots, okay? Where we, we want to return to that pivot. You know, 60 days probably is a little bit better. Okay. So that stops, guys. Okay. Right. Future. I'm going to bring the one minute over for, um, let me move that out of the way in a second, for copper. Okay. Now, it's not been a great day today, guys. When you look at ES, it's been a very narrow range. It's ugly. Bad trading day today. But there has been some reasonably good um, trades. Uh, I was a little bit too aggressive with HG uh, this morning, and, and you know, didn't really take a lot of money on it. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I've gone in reset mode. Um, I'm actually trading off, um, off simulator for the next week uh, because I need to reset, go back to basics and uh, build a little bit more confidence. So a tough day yesterday, okay? And if you have a tough day, don't dig the hole any deeper. And for me, the mentality is reset this weekend and go back, go sim, 
but go through the basics and make sure you are getting these trades. So when I'm looking at this on the one minute here, uh, you know, it's a reasonably good trade. The US stock market open is here. So this triggered at the open. This is a pretty good one hour. Uh, you know, how we didn't get continue with this one today. I was because I was being over conservative. Um, but again, it's about risk to reward. We've had a technical double bottom. We've got the market open. That could be the catalyst for the move up. We've got a signal, okay? We've got a signal at 15.28, two minutes before the open. Yeah, two minutes before the open. This is the one minute, the scalper's dream. So again, we look at risk reward to this, uh, this you know, this is an overnight resistance zone. Um, so, because I used it earlier, uh, what's the risk reward to that zone? One to one, okay? That's a decent enough uh, move because we know when it usually gets there, we're always printing or 95% of the time printing the trailing stop. So decent risk reward, one to one to this resistance level, uh, 2883, you know, that's a decent looking trade. To be honest, this is why I'm going for a reset because I just should have just trusted this and let it go because this then didn't take the trailing stop out until we got a 200% profit times risk, okay? There was the training stop, there it took it out. We went in a little bit later um, and we did okay. Uh, but then look, we get another long. So where's the bias today? You know, it's long. The short, the long failed here, but we had a great long first. Uh, and then you go again, oof, yeah, short works. Okay, really, 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 really simple. Sometimes everybody, including me, overcomplicates the strategy. And that's one of the worst enemies that we all have, is that we overcomplicate things. We start to put other drawings on there. Uh, you know, we start to see things that aren't there uh, and everything. So, you know, when we uh, come to look at this, um, we have to just go back to basics. And that's what I'm doing next week. Uh, when we look at ES, I mean, it's been horrible today. Even on a one minute, I don't think it's going to do it. So let me just find it. Um, Can't see the wood for the trees. There it is. Frederico, it has sort of been. I mean, it's horrible. It's it's an ugly looking instrument today. But there was some one minute roller coasters here. Okay. Uh, it's still finding its uh, way with the data because it's the one minute time frame. So we've got the US open here. Um, you know, I don't like to trade the first 15 minutes on ES or anything. Comes up, pops, comes down, test the bottom of the range. We get another long signal here. We go long. But are we really? I didn't trade, you know, there was no trades today because this zone, okay, had been tested all night, okay? To go along here, that risk to reward to that zone is 1 to 0 0.4 or something. Okay, coming out of the zone is better. Come to test, another fail, telling yourself, okay, another failure. Probably go down to test the bottom of the range. What's the risk to reward there, telling myself, okay. So there's the stop. There's the entry. There's your risk to reward, okay? One to two to the bottom of that target zone. Really good, okay? Uh, the long, I wouldn't have gone in because the risk to reward to the, to the resistance zone is bad. But when it fails in there, comes out and you get an entry below there, you've got to go for it. It's a great risk to reward, okay? Really great risk to reward. Uh, yeah, we'll have a look at that in a minute, Vic. So yeah, that, I mean, again, it works, whether it's one minute, three minute, five minute, two minute. And when you are getting the signals off the smart list, let me find the smart list again. Oh no, that's Twitter. What's Twitter doing there? Smart list. So when I go to the smart list now, um, I'm gonna go smart list. 
futures. Uh, one question I had today from, from a new user, and it, it, it's very pertinent actually, is that we have win rates on here. When, when is it classed as a win? Okay, now I'll go through that in a minute. So we've got the win rates down there, and we can go one minute all the way up to 60 minutes. Uh, we can actually detach those, okay? And we can change there, we can make it dark, and we can go and move it on another time frame, oh, another screen somewhere, okay? Move it around. So when it is a winner, okay? We class it as a winner when the trailing stock goes through the entry. So you are risk-free, okay? You didn't lose, in other words, okay? So when this first trailing stock prints at risk-free, it's classed as a winner, okay? Whether it comes back and hits that on that second, third, fourth, all the way down here, that's when we class it as a winner because these won't print unless you are in a winning or break even situation. So this is how we work out that win rate. Okay. That's the only way to do it. It, you know, when you're putting these algorithms together, um, you have to give them a set of rules. So the rule is trading stop is printed. When the trading stop is taken out, it's classed as a winner. Okay. All right, let's get rid of the one minute chart. Let's go to have a look at this from Vic and answer this question. So, Stocks again, and uh, mRNA. Okay. Is it still on there? Let me have a look. Um, that was a great winner here. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. to find it on the list mrna i don't know why it was deleted i'm going to, right now why we speak i am going to put in an inquiry to the dev to our dev team to ask that question just on one webinar Tell you why, because it's got the roller coaster entry short here. Two, he's still trying to find a stop, but that's not good enough. So, right, I've asked him that question. Okay, I think the algorithm's got a little mixed up here in that. Uh, we've got two short signals here. They weren't triggered. So in theory, if this comes back down, it will print a stop above there. Okay. It's still in that situation until it turns back down and gives you a short signal that that uh, another short signal from coming back up here, that these entries in theory are still good. It's just getting um, a little confused as it were. Yeah, there's a short signal here and there's a short signal by this morning star here. Yeah, so there's two. One here and then another one here. And the stock potentially will be above there, but it should have, um, it should have taken that off. Thanks for spotting that. Uh, I have passed it on. No problem. No, we didn't get a signal on Zoom yet. I got in Zoom at 131.61. It's at 249 now, waiting for another wave for pullback. But I'm just wondering if there's there's no um, roller coaster signal there yet to go short into the fourth wave target zone. So we're, we're a long way from that happening right now. 
Okay, so now's the time to ask the questions, guys. Have you got any questions on roller coasters, on burning questions? An example on a, a gold or a copper or a platinum or, or something, something you're not quite understanding. Okay, for those of you that trade Forex, if there's any of you, okay, this works exactly the same as if you were trading futures for 6E. So this is a three minute time frame on Euro US dollar. Would you have traded that today? Okay, you've got a great, uh, you know, one. so from nine o'clock European morning, don't trade before then on um, Forex. We've got a winner, winner, slight winner there. Okay, trading stops aren't printed with a vertical, uh, horizontal line here, because uh, we, can't, we can't program it into trading you. Um, but this is a winner because, again, back to that win rate, the trading stop was taken out, so we didn't lose. Okay, so from 9 a.m. this morning, winner, 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 and a winner. Okay, 100% win rate today on the three minute for euro, US dollar. That would be the same on 6E. Okay, so we're in the groove. Yeah, so when you guys in the USA wake up and you want to trade 6E or euro, US dollar, where's the groove? What's the time frame for that particular currency that's in the groove? Look for 9 a.m. European time. When the, when the European markets open, we've got a 100% win rate here. I get a short um, in the European afternoon uh, during the U US morning. I'm going to go. Yeah. Yeah. 9 a.m. Europe time. Yeah. That's when the markets open. <laughs> So again, very, very simple, works uh, very, very well. What do we look like on the 10 minute? I'll try a different strategy on the 10 minute. Uh, behaves pretty well, actually. Yeah, it doesn't behave too good, too bad. US afternoon. Wow, okay, that's not bad, actually. Funny you should say that. <laughs> I've been looking into Nadex just lately, Vic, really, really looking into this. So what I'm looking at right now, I'm just playing with it for now, just playing with it. But with Forex pairs, for example, and I'm looking Euro, US dollar here. Um, the only problem with Nadex is unless you get the ones early in the more, you know, the morning of the US morning, uh, you've got a long, um, Got a long, ex long expiration, but this one daily 3 p.m. one hour 59 um, here, and we're looking to go short, aren't we? So we need uh, what's the price currently on Euro US dollar? Oh, it's on the same thing here. So probably down to one, one three six. So uh, what we're looking for here is. Hold on. Uh, 14427. 14427. I'll just go back to the three minutes. 14427. So, what I'm looking for is to say no, it's not going to close above 14427. So, uh, 14420, 1440. Okay. So, now what I'm looking for here is uh, this is the hourly time frame. Let's go a little bit bigger here. Well, I'm looking at 1440. Ooh, that's not quite only 1460. Oh. So with this, uh, there's no there's no contracts. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go 1440. Uh, still above this recent pivot. What I'm gonna say is no, I don't think that this on binary options that this Euro US dollar that expires in just under two hours is gonna close above. One one four four zero. Oh, okay. So the problem is with this one is there's a long way to go down here, and if it does, you, you'll make a lot of money. You see your max loss, max profit, the risk reward ain't great there. Uh, but what we can do is we can go out uh, quite a little further. One one four zero. Oh. 
No, it's still still crappy, still crappy. I would probably go with call spreads on Forex for Euro, US dollar. Uh, we're going to go 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And 1140. Okay, we want to sell. Okay, so with call spread, we need it to end up in the next two hours in this zone here. Okay, so look at the call spreads. Uh, with these Forex pairs on Nadex, not necessarily the binary options or the knockouts even. So what you're doing with the call spread, obviously, is that you're saying in two hours, the price will be in there, okay? Look at the max loss right now, $6, max profit, $247. So let's go five contracts. I'm risking $30 for a max profit of $1,235, okay? I'm gonna go for it, place order, it's in, yeah? So what I need that for the Euro US dollar to do is continue in that downtrend that we have right now, break this pivot, get below uh, the one, um, what was it now? One four, one one four oh nine. Uh, 11409 is not far from where we are right now and just keep going okay come down to test these overnight lows and I'm going to be in the profits so don't necessarily stick to the binary options have a look at these call spreads as well I've risked $30 there for a potential $1235 profit okay so these call spreads are really good on Nadex I've been I've been playing with these uh, for a little while now so there's two hours for this to expire. But the good thing about this is, if you're in say five, $600 profit and you don't wanna let it run out, you can actually go and, and buy, buy those contracts back and you can close. Good, I'm glad we're on the same page here uh, because these call spreads and binary options are a lot cheaper than futures. And you can go two hours out you can go on the weeklies, for example, okay? Uh, and the knockouts are pretty good in that if you go on Forex on the weekly, so we've got till expiration tomorrow, and we've got a... What it does, it gives you a knockout price, okay? Which is up here. If it goes above there, it knocks you out. That's your loss. Uh, and that's your max profit thing. But if I want to sell... Uh, see this one, I risk 104 to win 100, 402. So this is more, this is set, okay? But the call spreads are a lot better because they have a higher potential. You can move a lot further. So if you do get a runner in that two hour slot or the daily slot, your potential here is massive. I think the roller coaster is much better for this uh, because you can understand um, if we go back to Euro US dollar, for example, and I go back to the hourly to begin with, where are we in the hour? Okay. Uh, potentially, we have it, we're coming back down through the entry on this roller coaster. It's going to break the wave for pull back in and then keep coming down. So we then go back down to a day trading time frame. This is going down still, okay? This is, and we're a long way from this trailing stop. We look back at previous shorts, looking pretty good. Where's our support and resistance zone? If it breaks this, this is gonna go. For 30 bucks to win 1200, I'm gonna go, yeah? It, it behaves well, it's behaving well right now. And all we've gotta do is get into this zone and we start to be in profit. Uh, that I will do next week, um, Jurek, that's, that's called Trilogy trade, uh, Trading. So that's when uh, we will be looking at combining those, tie, those, um, those strategies, the Elliott Wave and everything like that. I just want to stick to, to Roller Coaster today. One thing when you are looking at 
going short euro US dollar. See what the US dollar is doing, DXY guys. Okay, uh, it's very very important to understand what's going off there. So it, it's on here on trading view or a CFD and with DXY. Okay, we're on a roller coaster long and it's going for it. That's going to send the euro US dollar down. I'm surely I'm going to risk 30 bucks to ring 1200 potentially there. Okay, this is going for it. This is really, really going for it right now. So, you know, we've got two hours to get down into this zone and below this pivot. This could drop, it's worth that risk. So yeah, glad you mentioned that. I've been looking at that for the last week or so. Um, I've, still, I've still got some work to do. I need to understand um, these call spreads a little better. I think they're probably better than binary because binary, you've got a set profit. The potential, if you go out long enough on these Forex pairs, uh, on these, you know, risk 30 to win 1200, the potential is massive. All you need is a runner once a week and you're going to make a, make a lot of money with very, very small risk. Okay, let's put that back on here. So this is 6E, for example, guys, on the uh, futures. Behaves very much the same way. Remember, we're already in... Um, that on the euro us dollar and you can see 60 pushing down there it's actually on a wave three right now because when we pulled down we pulled back up on a wave two so we had that um lower resistance level so this trend is forming okay we've got two hours to get there no I, that is one warning guys nadex is in the usa it is regulated. A lot of these binary options and call spreads brokers are in places like Cyprus. They're not regulated. They have all these stipulations to get your money out. So you could be winning, but you can't get your money out. So be very, very careful with call spreads and binary options. Nadex, I've met these guys when I was in the US. Uh, they're, they're regulated. They're in the US. They are safer. Okay. Trading Overall, it's not a safe place to be anyway, guys. Okay, but uh, these are pretty good. Okay, guys, we're nearing the end. Unless you've got any more questions. Uh, there was some good feedback today, Vic. Really great uh, that you're looking at Nadex. I think, to be honest, if we if get strategy right, this is going to be cheaper than futures and a good one. Still coming down. Thank you, Rick. Vic, <clears throat> call you Rick there. <clears throat> Anybody else got any more questions? Okay, that's what I'm here for. No problem, Rob. Silver. Let's have a look at silver. Have I got it on this watch list or do I need to find it? There's something I need. Uh, we have a futures, silver. Okay. Ooh, that's a good one, Greg. It's been in the groove today quite a bit. European morning, nice move down. Winner here, loser here, okay? Be aware, but good winner and a good short now. Are you short this, Greg? Amazing. Does work very well with roller coaster. I mean, this is what, $50, 50 a tick? <laughs> this is a big trade, okay? This is... A few thousand dollars here, so this this is a big trade. Quite a big risk. Uh, yes. Again, we looked at ES earlier. Um, all of them have been in a tight range today. Okay, 
Uh, where are we? So I'm going to look at NQ. We looked at ES earlier. I'm going to go down to the one minute because we've been in a tight range. And can we trade that range? So this is the pre-market, the open. Look, we'd never trade in that first 15 minutes on, on indexes. That, this one isn't behaving well on the one minute. Two minute, a little better. Just about finding the groove, which reminds me there is, I'm gonna put it in the chat. I wrote an article in February Okay, about finding the groove, the roller coaster. Okay, uh, I've just put the link in the chat there. It's on our, it's on our blog. Um, but again, you know, this NASDAQ is not in the groove today. ES was the one that was in the groove. Uh, let's go to RTY second. Let's go down to three minutes. I like RTY using three minutes. Decent move there. That was a loser, that first one. Two minutes. One minute. Mm -hmm. The only one seen to be aiming today is ES, okay? Some reasonably good moves there on ES. But again, when I bring my think or swim chart over for uh, the four indexes, this is a five minute chart. When we are in a range like this, very difficult to trade, guys. Very difficult. Uh, even when you're looking at um, gold or something like that, very, very difficult. You know, ES keeps coming to test this resistance zone, keeps failing, okay? So why are you going to go long anything else if this keeps holding things back? Yes, if it breaks through, which it could do right now, it could fail again. Let it go up, come down, test support, then trade. Don't try and break this because, yes, it can go for it. But other times, it'll just come out and come back in again. Okay? So, ES for me, we are talking 7.15 p.m. my time now. Market's open at 3.30 p.m. You know, ES has not been tradable all of this time. You know, we're looking at NQ now. You know, we're still not at the overnight highs yet. It's looking to test them, but we're still in a range. When I look at my stocks board, there isn't a great deal that are green right now, okay? I tend to look at Apple all the time. Apple's the big leader. That gap down, and it has a flat doji. Yeah, not going anywhere. <laughs> no problems, Dan. It's about finding the groove. Yeah, it's about finding the groove. And obviously, the, what your broker is going to charge you as well, you know, um, you know, I'm with Infinity for futures. The charges aren't too bad. And when you get the thing is, if you're trading on the one minute, it's about trying to find a runner. Okay, some of them will be, um, you know, just over break even and with charges, you know, you're probably going to be in a slight loss, loss making position. But when you get a runner, okay, and I mean a runner, okay, it more than makes up for that. So this is 3201 down to 3198, okay, 12 ticks. Not bad. It's not a runner, okay. Can I show you some runners? I don't, don't know. I mean, you know, it's, it's been one of those days. It's not a great day. 60 probably. Takes time to populate the charts. I would call that a runner, wouldn't you, Stan? Okay. Whoa. So with 86% win rates and things like that, they're not all gonna be big moves, okay? This one, 
was only a few ticks. This one was pretty good. This is the runner you're looking for, okay? So this, you keep plugging away at it. Um, you know, one or once a day or maybe once every two days, you get the runner and that, excuse the language, that is a freaking runner, okay? Yeah, so it's about plugging away. You know, I did see another runner here, okay? And I saw another runner long, there he goes, look, boom, 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 yeah, okay? Another runner short, okay? So just sit in front of the computer, trade 6E all day on the roller coaster, and you will get runners. You will get frustrated sometimes, okay? But when you get those runners, wow, do they run, okay? So the idea is 86% win rate. Some of those aren't fantastic wins, but you keep plugging away. Imagine if this was an automated trading strategy and we want to do that next year. You take all that emotion out of it, it enters every single trade. And when it gets the runners, it will take those runners, okay? 24 hours a day or 23 hours a day, yeah? That makes sense? Don't you wish you'd have got that one today? Any more QS Jones? Okay, so just, just back to this Nadex trade on uh, 60 stroke Euro US dollar. This is now at break even, okay? Uh, we're not into the zone yet, and it's, it's telling me I'm not in a loss making position uh, anymore. Okay, we're, we're flat. Yeah, we're flat. I quite like that. Okay, so remember, with this one, there's an hour 40 minutes left on this. There's still some bearish momentum here. If it can break that pivot, that $30 risk is going to turn into quite a bit of money. <laughs> okay, Stan, no problem. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm confident in it, but sometimes, uh, you know, you've got to be, uh, I'm going for a reset this weekend and next week, uh, because sometimes you can overthink it. Uh, you might, you, I think sometimes with a roller coaster, think of yourself as an automated trading bot. Just do that little work to make sure you've got enough risk reward to the next support resistance zone. But in reality, uh, be like a bot. Trade the signals. As long as a decent risk reward, trade them. Okay, and you know you will get those runners. It's just a matter of patience uh, to get those runners. And sometimes, as traders, it's very difficult to have patience. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get going, guys. Uh, great speaking to you again. Um, I'm still clear. The last two weeks in August, I won't be doing this. I get JW is going to do it because I'm taking a holiday. Um, so I will see you all next Thursday in a circle, guys. See you on Monday. Uh, hopefully, everybody has a great weekend and um, stay green. Cheers, everybody. Thank you, Federico. Going to Nurka. Thank you, Vic. Thank you, Stan. Take care, everybody.